Hello and welcome. I'm Bruce. This is Speed and Color. Well, the Bad Living Roadshow was freaking awesome. What a great, great show. I met so many wonderful people. We were treated so well down there. Um, just had a really good time. Uh, Lee Sipes did a great job of organizing the show and the Frontier Ghost Town, I believe they call it. It's just a perfect setting. The campground was great. Everything was really, really good. And a highlight for me was meeting the three young men that you're gonna get to meet in this episode. These guys, man, they just, you know, in a, in a time when there seems to be way too many young men living in their parents' basements, playing on their Xboxes, and going to the shopping mall in their pajama pants. These guys are just a breath of fresh air, and they give me hope that, that really there, there is a future, for, a future for custom motorcycles, especially choppers, um, that this culture will, will carry on. And it just, just kind of gave me a whole new outlook, or, or not a new outlook, but a renewed outlook uh, on, uh, on things in general. Uh, these young men, they're, they're getting uh, an education. Uh, a couple of them are in trades. Um, they, uh, you know, they're respectful, they're intelligent, they're articulate. Uh, these guys are just nice young men who are enjoying, um, enjoying their passion that they've found. They're enjoying riding, they're enjoying building. Uh, you know, they, they really, uh, they've really embraced this, uh, this culture of choppers. Um, they, they are, like I say, respectful. They, they totally look up to all of the older guys that they're meeting in the culture and, and in the community. Uh, and they appreciate everything that gets done for them. Uh, appreciation is another thing that came through. These guys truly appreciate being a part of the scene and being involved. And I, I just, I thought it was awesome. I think these guys are awesome. I'm not gonna tell you what they do that's different. That'll all come out in the episode. Uh, I just wanna say, uh, gentlemen, you did a great job. I really appreciate you. And uh, to the parents of, of these three, and, and there's more guys, more guys and gals in the group, and, and I certainly don't want to pass over them, but um, for the three guys that we talked to here in the episode, uh, to their parents, I didn't get to meet you, I don't know you, but I wanna tell you, I think you've done a wonderful job with, uh, with these young men. Uh, just, uh, like I say, very encouraging, uh, very exciting, and uh, the adventures, the, the camaraderie, the, uh, all of that stuff. Uh, I just wish them all the best. I think it's going to be great. So, you know what? If you've got a few minutes, sit down with us. Uh, I think you'll get a real kick out of these guys. Uh, I think you'll like to see what they're riding and building and, and hear about their antics and everything. And uh, once again, to, to Lee Sipes, great job of bringing everybody together at the Bad Living Road Show. And uh, you know what, Queen Street Moto, Lee Sipes, I'll see you again next year for sure. All right, enjoy the episode. Thanks for joining us. See you soon. Here we are at the Bad Living Road Show. Uh, man, oh man, what an event. This is uh, just crazy. And uh, forgive us, the, the music in the background may be a bit much, but we're gonna try and work through that. Uh, we are at a live, uh, live event, live venue here. Um, I don't think we should have too many people walking in behind us, but you never know. Uh, but certainly the noise is going to be a bit of an issue for us, but uh, we'll do our best. I am here today with uh, Queen Street Moto. 
uh, is the name of the group and I have three of the individuals here with me. What we're going to do is we're going to have a, a casual conversation, talk to these guys, find out what uh, Queen Street Moto is about, find out what the deal is, find out what they think about bad living uh, and the whole uh, custom motorcycle culture scene in, uh, well, I guess, southern Ontario. Uh, I will say up front, uh, the reason I was very interested in talking to these guys they're a little bit out of the norm. They uh, they do metric choppers. They're they're all riding metric stuff. Uh, and you know the the world is not made of Harleys. Uh, there's lots of Harleys in the world, but it's not made of Harleys. And I think it's cool that these guys ride other stuff. So we're gonna we're gonna take a look at the bikes here after we have a conversation. And uh, yeah, we'll get to know them, their bikes, the scene here, and uh, and find out what's going on. So I'm going to start by asking each of you to introduce yourself, do a little spiel on uh, who you are, why you're here, what got you into bikes, uh, what you do for a living, uh, all that kind of stuff. So. Uh, why don't we start with you, young man? Because you were you were so eager. You were the first yes. guy over here sitting so. in a chair, saying, "I can start early if yeah. you want." So go ahead. Uh, well, my name's Andy. Uh, I'm a millwright, and uh, do my second year of apprenticeship this year. Uh, I got another year left. I'm graduating, and then uh, when I'm a certified millwright, all my money is just dumped into motorcycles. That'll be it. Just like. So a millwright, who do you work for? Uh, Lidamar. Okay. Yeah, Lidamar S and Manufacturer. And doing what? Because millwright covers a pretty broad scope. Yeah, we, we like, if a machine breaks down, I got to go down and like, fix it. I got to go like like hydraulic tanks. And, like, okay. Like, other cool. things like that. Like, big, like cooling tanks and stuff like that. And I uh, like, weld the bottoms or whatever together, make, making parts and stuff like that. I have a really good time doing that. And, uh, I've, I've got my Skyjack license, my uh, forklift license. So, right. If you, if you see how I am on a bike, you wouldn't shuffle back to a forklift now. No way. I, I wouldn't shuffle. I don't shuffle so fast. And you do some welding? Yeah, I do welding too, yeah. And do you, with the group, do you guys kind of cross over if somebody needs some welding done? Do you help out? Yeah, kind well, of the deal? I made the exhaust heads for my bike. Those, those were custom for me that I made up. So I wanted two up seats because last year I crashed my bike and I broke my wrist. And my exhaust pipe kind of got messed up. And then we made some like weird up seat fish tails and wraps. Wrap didn't look too good on it, but then I chopped them and I made short, uh, short shotgun fish tails. And then I'm like, okay, no, I'm going to do long up seats. So then came up so. So I like how they just like go like, they kind of like both get a nice 90 at the bottom and shoot up like 45. So. So you're the fabricator in yeah. the group. Okay, cool. You, my friend. Yes. So uh, my name is Jeff. I'm 20 years old, and uh, and I do electrical. I'm a electrical apprentice. So um, I've done a little bit of everything, like industrial, commercial, residential. Uh, but right now, I just do a lot of service work. So um, if someone needs lighting or bathroom fans, just like basic stuff, basic little, little stuff. Cool. Um, and uh, yeah, in my spare time, I pretty much use all my free time on motorcycles. <laughs> what got you into bikes? So uh, I've always been a gearhead. I started out with cars. I still love them to death. It's one of my favorite things on the planet. Um, I always knew I was going to get a motorcycle at some point. I didn't know it was going to be this early in my life. I thought I'd maybe do it down the road. Uh, but Andy, when I got my first car, Andy got his first bike. Um, so we kind of, you know, reversed there, um, okay. and uh, and then I guess I broke my arm, I had some time off, and I ended up going to Friday the 13th with him in Port Dover a couple years ago, oh, okay. and I drove my truck down there, because I had a ride at the time, and he rode his bike there, and the moment I got there, I realized I had to do this. It was just amazing. I'd never seen anything like it, <laughs> and I didn't think I would go as far as this. Um, in terms of uh, like customization and stuff like that. Um, I just knew I had to start riding. And then uh, once my arm healed up a couple months later, my mom taught me how to ride her, her big cruiser. Uh, so I started out with that. 
And then not too long after that, I got my first my first bike. Nice. Had to start off from there. Cool. Yeah. And I I met that. Where do you live? So I live in Milton, Ontario. You're in Milton. Yeah. Uh, Rockwood. You're in Rockwood. Okay. Mike. Hey, I'm Mike. Um, I'm 24. I work at a pallet and a mulch factory. I drive an excavator. I just like crush wood and load, load up trucks all day. It's pretty chill. Um, I went to school in Peterborough. Uh, I'm a business administration uh, graduate. I'm looking for a uh, you know, job in that field, but you know, in this, in this time it's been a little harder, but uh, you know, maybe I'll figure something out. But uh, I started Queen Street. 2020 just like it was covid so i was just like i got it i had this bike and i was like man i want to make like like i didn't have any instagram or nothing so i was like i'm gonna make an instagram for my bike my girlfriend was like do it and i was like okay and then i had it for like two years just like posting little mods i did to my bike and then i went to freedom machine my buddies that i went to freedom machine with they ended up going to a cottage and i was like i'm not going to a cottage i took a, i took this weekend off to hang out with bikers and then I met these two little guys, and we were the youngest guys here, and we were like, oh, we got so rowdy that night, we came. And once we realized that we are all like within 45 minutes of each other, we realized we're going to be best friends for forever, man. It was awesome. Right? Cool. Cool. <laughs> so where does the name Queen Street come from? What's the deal? Uh, I live on, uh, I live in Cambridge. Um, in Hespler, in a little, in like Cambridge is split up into three towns, and I live in Hespler, and uh, Queen Street uh, is like the main downtown area and that's kind of like where me and my my neighbor used to walk there barefoot and go get ice cream it's just like where we grew up right and uh, I live just off Queen Street down the road a little bit so I just figured you know I can't call it you know I, I didn't I, I just had a nice ring to it I don't know there you go and I just wanted to keep it kind of local maybe I'll open up a shop on Queen Street one day <laughs> something like Perth County Moto or something <laughs> like that like a little shop cool yeah that's neat so you guys mentioned uh, freedom. So this event, tell tell me more because I don't know a lot about the history. And you know, we all know Lee, and I haven't told you guys, but what happened is last year in June, Karen and I came out, and we were going to Stratford, and we drove past Shakespeare, and they had that Dice Magazine deal on at the Shakespeare Brewing Company. I was there. Okay. Yeah. So I stopped there, we met Jeff, we met some other people. Didn't think much of it. Uh, I was getting ready to start the podcast at that time, hadn't, hadn't done one yet. And uh, when I got home, this guy Lee Sipes reaches out to me and says, man, I'm sorry I missed you at the, at the Dice event. I'd like to connect with you and stuff. So we connected, he told me what he was planning and I told him I was planning the podcast and everything. So you you've all listened or watched the the podcast with Lee. We got things together, and uh, he let me know I was an invited builder for the event. And and I said to Karen, "Well, we can't not go now. We gotta gotta be there." Uh, so that's my connection to Lee. That's how how we met. Uh, but what about you guys? You met Lee at Freedom? I, I met Lee like two weeks before the very last Freedom Machine. And he, he's, he's the one that told me, he was like, hey, you guys, he was like leaning up on my bike while he's all cool. He looks like, just like a big cool biker guy. And he's like, you guys should come to my event next weekend, or two weeks from now. And we're like, oh, hell yeah, man. Like, yeah. So that's how I met him. And then we saw him at the show. And, and then we just kept going to events and we just, you know, yeah. see him more and more. And we just kind of, you know, hey, Lee. Yeah, going to, Me, going to events. we ended up meeting, so you kind of knew Lee from that. Yeah. And then me and Andy um, started to build more of a relationship with Lee because he, uh, last summer, he doesn't do it anymore, but last summer he, every Tuesday, would put together an event called Two Wheel Tuesdays in Kitchener. Yeah. And it was just like a nice, simple bike night, so we would go as much as we could. And, uh, and that's kind of how we grew um, our relationship with him and got to know the event that we're at right now. So the last Freedom show was what year? Uh, 2022. It was 22. Yeah, I think it was uh, two years ago. Oh. Yeah. So last year there was nothing, and now we've got Bad yeah, Living. Yeah. So what's your impressions of Bad Living? Uh, it's definitely cool. I feel like if you uh, 
but let's see like any type of rock and roll and just like just like being trashy and being like super cool at the same time. I think it's like a perfect event to be the best. Like there's a there's a haircut place going on. Like that was true yesterday and I saw him get his haircut. I'm like, you know what I'm gonna shag him right now and I just went up there and I got my haircut. That's how I got stuff with hair. You're uh you're kind of a spontaneous guy, aren't you? Yeah, 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 I get that impression. Yeah, yeah. yeah these guys are going, yeah, oh yeah, that, yeah, that's Andy, yeah. Cool. So what about you guys? What do you think of bad living? Honestly, it's, uh, the weather couldn't be better. It's a great weekend. I'd rather do nothing else. This is my vacation for me. I prefer this over, you know, flying overseas or whatever. Yeah. And, uh, and, you know, I wouldn't rather do anything else than just sit around and talk about motorcycles all day. It's awesome. So tell me, what for you guys, like I was so impressed yesterday taking a ride from uh, from Hanover around uh, to Gray Road 25. Man, beautiful road, beautiful road. How are the roads for you guys getting up here? Are they pretty good? Uh, are they? It's hit or miss. We did run from It's hit or miss. It's traffic, but that. But they're they're smooth we seem to find all the bad roads yeah, yeah. like we, we kind of got used to the, how bumpy the yeah. roads are so if yeah. it's not that yeah. bumpy we're like oh that was a great road driving through downtown Toronto is a nightmare you got, if you have a hardtail chopper stay away from Toronto streets please <laughs> can't do it can't do it or well well, it's also terrible. Yeah, well, they'll get it. Right. Now, are you all on hardtails, or has somebody yeah. got to yeah. oh, hardtail? Yeah. The three of us are on hardtails. You guys are hardcore, aren't you? Yeah. 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 Right. We try. So, the culture in this area, and again, that's part of what I was impressed with last year when we came out, is, I mean, the, the number of choppers and you know, just the whole scene seems really, really good. We've been to Friday the 13th several times. Uh, we're going to be there again in September. Love that event. It just seems to be a lot of cool stuff going on here. And that's got to be part of what motivates you guys to be oh, in yeah. this. Because you've just got so much to go to and, and oh, to yeah. do. What other events do you do? What? Well, we recently did a road trip to uh, New York City, or sorry, not New York City, but we went to New York. Okay. Uh, we just traveled back roads with our buddy Rob. He helped put my frame together and helped me with my bike. I wanted to take my bike to the guy's great guy. And he made a frame for him yeah. too. This is 905 Rob? Yeah. yeah. The guy I got he does, yeah. He's an absolute, like, he's our... Um, Chopper Daddy. Our mentor yeah. when it comes to, yeah, our Chopper Daddy. Daddy. Yeah, I love that. He, he's like our sensei. It's he's like, a great guy to talk to because he's done a lot of stuff. So every time we need every time we need framework, bits of advice, hey, Rob, you know, I'm thinking of doing this or um, what's your take on this? He's a really good guy to talk to. He's, yeah, he's our mentor. And does he ride quite a bit with you? Oh, yeah. all the time. He rides way more than us. Okay. He, he rides everywhere. And he's in the same vicinity as you guys? Uh, Burlington. Okay. But well, not far at all. Yeah. Maybe like half an hour. Yeah. Cool. Good we also, the other events we try to get to is uh, Bike Night at Steel Town Garage. You catch us there a times on Thursdays. And what's the name of that uh, again? Steel Town Garage. So it's a cafe. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah. And then also Perth yeah. County Bike Nights we like to get yeah. to. Oh, yeah. And Those uh, Perth County Bike Nights are crazy, yeah. aren't they? Yeah. And what about the anniversary party? Do you guys do that one too, or? I think we did that one. Yeah. Did we do that? Because I I heard that Perth County anniversary thing. That's what in in September, first or second weekend of September. I've heard he gets big bike counts out for that. Yeah. They had like a camera booth where you like stick your. You oh, know, you uh, went yeah, to that. Yeah. We didn't go to that. Well, I was there with you. I think I bought my spear that day, dude. Yeah, you bought it. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I wasn't there with that. Spear, the top I missed that. Yeah. But that was. Like $900 probably for you. Yeah, that was cool. Yeah. Cool. And then we also, uh, another trip we do is the Sega Beach. Yeah. That's oh, what, yeah. That's yeah. Like, uh, yeah. Pretty yeah. Metal, like, it's, our, it's like a yeah. day bus two years ago. Yeah. 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 We have some annual trips we do. Um, so like West Saga is kind of like our annual trip. We try to do every single year just for fun. 
we just pick a weekend and we go. It's just free spontaneous. And uh, it's just for one night. Just get the let loose for a weekend. You get all leathery on the beach. <laughs> go to the bar after. And it's a fun night. You got sand in our hair. Way home. <laughs> yeah. And then another uh, place you like to hang out too is Laura. Laura, yeah. Where? Uh, Laura. Oh, Laura. Really small town. It's just like 20 minutes from my house. It's, it's, it's really nice because it's packed a lot of tourists though. So that's the only part that kind of sucks about it. But um, Laura's a really nice town. Really good town. Oh, that's cool. Good oh. stuff. <laughs> nice. <laughs> hey, Lee. That's a 360 camera. <laughs> oh, cool. You gonna edit that in? No. Oh, why not? Family, family friend me. Oh, that's that would, awesome. That now, Andy, you're planning a trip. Yeah, I'm going. Well, to, not uh, planning. Sorry, you're the spontaneous guy. Yeah. You know you're gonna take a trip, but it's already planning. in motion, man. I'm going okay. to uh, going all the way down to Algonquin Parks. So trip. I'm going for eight days. I might take. I might go to Tolboy, take the ferry across, and keep pushing north and work my way all the way back down. Really sweet. There's a really cool right. Maryland Road diner that I might stop at too. And see if I get my bike put inside, take some pictures of it. That'd be pretty sweet. And how many days is that? Eight. Eight, eight days, eight seven days. nights. I don't know where I'm gonna sleep. I'm just gonna pull off the side road. It's my tent. I'll be it. So it will be. Right. What about you guys? Any trips planned? Uh -huh. I mean, I'm I'm pretty busy with work most of the time. I don't really have the, the luxury to take off a whole week, but um, whenever we can, we try to fit trips in. Um, we've been trying to go on more camping trips with uh, with our buddy Rob because he's pretty. Um, he's definitely a lot more spontaneous and ballsy than we are. I, I think because um, our trips are like maybe two hours. Uh, but he, he'll go on uh, like a couple day long trips. Last time we did the trip to New York State, we rode, um, which for him isn't that long, but it was a total like over 700 kilometer trip, um, which is the longest trip I think we've ever done pretty much in, in one sitting uh, for, for two days. But um, we've really been trying to get out more and do that with him while we can. Because it's just, it's so much fun. Right. Yeah. Good stuff. And 905 Rob, what does he ride? Uh, so, 750 Ace. 2002. Yeah. Yeah. What was that? Yeah. He's on a Honda. That's cool. But it's all Yeah, we all ride metrics. You wouldn't, you wouldn't be able to tell it's a Honda. Yeah. He's a metric guy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you'll have to drag him over here later. I'm sure we can. Yeah. I'm sure we can find him. Yeah. So, what else? Anything else you guys want to tell me about the area? Events, anything, or uh, I don't think so, man. One, we're just thing. We're, we're just very happy that you uh, even have us on here. Like, yeah, yeah, no, it's yeah, amazing. We really appreciate it's that. It's great. I I love learning about the different areas, the different cultures yeah. and stuff, and because uh, we never, yeah. we're like young, we're like pretty, like I don't, you know, we're pretty young, so we never know really what those older guys. Well, we usually stand out because of our age. Stay in our own lane. <laughs> Stop bragging about being young, okay? Yes. You're pissing me off there. No, I'm kidding. But, um, well, you know what we should do is we should probably move all these chairs out of the way and bring one of the bikes in and let's uh, let's just stand around it and talk about the bike and stuff and then we can kick it out and bring the next I can bring my bike in first. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Andy, Wait, you're the always one first, in. man. Yeah. You're you're right on yeah. things here. Yeah. Hey, look, before we do that, I actually got a question for you. Yeah, yeah. fire away. So, what made you want to do interviews with motorcyclists? And oh, especially boy. these types of motorcyclists too. So, um, I'm friends with the editor of Inside Motorcycles magazine. Okay. I don't know if you've ever read it. It's really, Patrick, don't be offended. It's really not our kind of magazine. It's more sport bike, track, that kind of stuff. But I've known Patrick for quite a while, and I work for Honda Canada. That's how I got to meet Patrick. He came to me a couple years ago, and he said, you know what you need to do? And I said, what do I need to do? And he said, you need to do a podcast. And I thought he was out of his mind, right? So. 
I started doing the research on close to retirement. I knew I was going to have some time when I retired. I was kind of looking for something to do. Karen and I want to travel. So I thought, okay, how do I make this work? What, what do I do? And, you know, the one thing Patrick had told me, he said, you have a lot of experience around cars. I've, I've done some drag racing. I'm still planning to do more. I've got an altered in the garage right now. Uh, you know, I've done the hot rod thing, bikes, obviously, I've been into. He said, you've, you've got a real well-rounded experience and you've got some skill and stuff. And he said, a lot of guys I see on podcasts really don't have that. They're, they're counting on the guests to know what to talk about. So he said, that's why I think you should do a podcast. So I looked into it. And I thought, well, I already own a couple cameras and this might not be that tough. And I thought, what do I do it on? And the custom motorcycle culture is, is kind of a limited thing. But what's beautiful about it is it's, it's focused for sponsors and people that might partner with you. So maybe I can't show a million views on YouTube but I can show 10,000 views that are directly about a Harley Davidson Sportster. So if Mr. Mr. Marketing for a company, if your target demographic is men over 40 who own Harley Davidson Sportsters, I can put you in front of 10,000 of them. Uh, so thinking about it that way, I thought, yeah, maybe this can work. So I spent a little bit of money and we bought a tent and we bought some chairs and I started recording and you guys will be episode 20 or 21, uh, which in the podcasting world is real young. Uh, and hopefully I can come back and have you on episode yeah, 110 or something like that. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, we're, we're getting there and I know the episodes are getting better. My editing's getting better, the topics are getting better, the guests are getting better. Uh, that's what I love about well, maybe this. Maybe we back like 50 is, or like 100 videos of yours. And yeah. Maybe we can get them yeah. yeah. But I, you know, I love this because this is, I'm out of Calgary now and, and I'm a long ways from Calgary. Yeah. So this has a whole new flavor and a whole new demographic yeah. to get to, right? And, and of course, the people I already have a West yeah. who follow will look at this and go, oh, that's cool. And it will be more interesting for them. So it's all good and it's developing and we travel and have fun and yeah. we get to meet cool guys like you. And well, yeah. this year we're going to be on these bikes, but we already have these bikes in motion. I got a Sportster 1200 CC. Oh, okay. He's now got a CD. And he's working on A, so we have we have new bikes coming up that we'll be riding in a couple of years from now. Okay, see, this, we'll have to do this again. Man. Yeah. This is yeah, but this is where I wanted to go. Now yeah. this is news. You guys are telling me stuff that your friends will want to know too. So tell me about your new ride. Yeah. What about me? Tell me about your new ride. The my new ride. So I, I want to do a Gumi C motorcycle. I've never. I like making bikes that no one else has. But um, yeah, so uh, it's gonna be pretty sweet. Like I want to paint. Hey, you guys, going down like the back of the fender and everything like that. And then I'm put like little gems and jewels going down the seat or something. Sweet. And this is a Harley. Yeah, it's a sports suit. So you're well, stepping school, out yeah. of the metric world. Yeah, because I, yeah. I actually it was Mike's name that I bought it off, and he comes up our driveway one one like one day in February. And he's like, hey, I'm selling a sports suit. You guys want to buy it? I'm like, yeah, let me see it, dude. He's like, how much did you sell for? I'm like, 20, he's like, 2,600 bucks. Got, Which is unheard of. And it's got yeah. 28,000 kilometers on it. I'm like, nice. Like, yeah. And, uh, what, how, uh, what year is it, Andy? 96? 97. 97? Yeah. 2,600 bucks. And then for I, a Harley Sporty 1200. And I had to hide it at Mike's house because uh, I, didn't, I didn't want my parents to find out about it. So it was like, it was there for like a month or two. And I'm like, my parents are like, where did all your money go? I'm like, I don't know. Maybe, maybe, I had, maybe somebody stole it from me. I don't know. Yeah. You're probably so chill about all your money. You got your parents like, yeah. yeah. But now I gotta start saving for car. I got, I gotta do that before I start my sports. Team. My car's gonna be okay. 
Yeah, you know, I I don't know. Well, uh, you're a millwright. Yeah. You guys are all gearheads. Um, I find the building is as much fun as the riding. Oh yeah, it really is. Oh. You know, and and I've always been the same way about the race car. Yeah, I get I get a kick out of running the race car, but I I get a kick out of having somebody else drive it while I wrench it. Because I learn so much about the thing when I'm when I'm preparing it and watching it and seeing what it does on the starting line and everything else, I I just love the mechanical part of it. Yeah, driving's a rush, but the mechanical thing is just a whole different satisfaction. So what's your new one gonna be? So um, my new bike that I'm building currently, it's gonna take me a bit, but um, it's a 1981 CV750F. Okay. So it's a little different than it's. So stepping away from the V twins, it's a this big inline four. Um, it's son of a, it's something I've always wanted to do. I think it's definitely a bucket list bike for me. Um, just because I, I think you can make them look so rowdy, yeah. And it's it's something that you know you're putting uh, a sports bike engine into a Harley, and that's you know they've been doing that for a very long time too. From um, you know seeing all the Honda Digger choppers from the yeah. 70s and stuff, and that's something when I decided to get my CB Sun 50F and shop it, I started looking into that a lot and getting really obsessed with it, like just. The overall styling and the the funk that goes along with it um it's just those bikes are just packed and packed with personality and it's something that i absolutely love doing building anything whether it's small or um you know super big takes a lot of work uh i love just making it your own putting personality making it an extension of yourself so um i'm doing all the work all the man hours all the fabrication all the body work because um, as grand as this build is gonna at least i'm gonna try to make it pretty amazing i, I have a, a you know good vision for it um i'm also trying to make it a, a bit of a budget build because money doesn't grow on trees for me so uh so as much as i would love to buy everything and slap it on i just don't have that luxury but i think that's what um i also like doing that too is, is really trying to figure things out and Cool. And try to Good make you. everything myself. So. And Mike? Well, for me, I got a I got a O3 on a Shadow Ace 750 that I took to Rob to throw in his jig, and he cut it in half and put it back together as like a hardtail. Nice. Um, so it's a little bit different than Andy's bike, but it's same same year and same engine and stuff like that. So, uh, but mine's a little different. I got the single backbone going on it, or the okay. round backbone going on it. Originally, the Aces have like a rectangular backbone. Oh, okay. And then you can only get a tank from TJ Brutal Custom. So I, I asked Rob if I could do this round backbone. He said no problem. Uh, and uh, I got a Dyna. I got a '90s Dyna front end that I'm gonna convert to fit on a Honda. And I'm gonna break that out. Probably or not break it out, but probably uh, extend it forward to about six inches. And I'm gonna paint it all like a nice gloss black. And like the biggest, like as much sparkle as you can, so it looks like you're looking out of the night sky. And uh, yeah, it's the biggest flake you can shove through a gun. The biggest flake you can fit in the gun, yeah. Just, uh, it's just gonna be like my clean build. My bike will right now, like you guys, you guys can see it's pretty, it's pretty ratty. I built it when I was 19, I'm 24 now. Yeah. And uh, you know, so I need, I need to upgrade eventually. But I'm, I'm always busy building other, other. Uh, the guys will bring their bikes to my garage, and then I get sidetracked from my bike to other bikes. Like, not these guys. These guys are pretty good. Jeff does everything himself. Um, I try. But, you know, our other guys, they're always coming to me. Mike, we can sum it out like a shirt, man. I, I, like, I love doing it. It's no problem for me. But uh, I always get sidetracked on my own bike, so it's taking me a little bit of time. And also buying parts and stuff like that. You know, or, you know, stuff's expensive, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, um... I think also the reason why we kind of stick to metric choppers is um, it's also just really cheap. <laughs> the bikes are cheap and the versatility with them is uh, is pretty mind blowing. You can get Harley parts and throw it on a Japanese bike, um, but you just can't really do the um, you know vice versa. So uh, I think that's what really sticks with us is the versatility with them. 
Well, just so you know, I've got uh, three XS 650s. The first one I'm working on right now is going to be a cafe racer tracker sort of style. The second one I've got a Springer for, so it's going to be a hardtail chopper, you know, old school kind of thing. And I picked up a Kawasaki, a 75H1, so a 500 two-stroke triple. Because I just thought with climate change and everything else, a guy just needs to own one of those stinky, loud, obnoxious old bikes, right? And I i don't know if you've ever seen who did that bike. FNA choppers, I think, did it, are the guys who built it. They did a, a Kawasaki triple, and they did it in a digger style. Okay. Oh man, is that a sweet bike. It is very cool. It's raked out a bit, but it, it's low. It just and I've I've always loved that bike and they polish the motor. It's very, very cool. So first I gotta get the triple running and, and get it all back together. And once I've got it through a safety and got it registered and insured then I think it'll be time to chop it up and, and I think it's going to be a digger. So yeah, yeah, that's what I'm working on. Nice. Oh, sweet. Man. Cool. So we dip, All right. Dipping your toes into the... What's that? That's the mic. Yeah, we're going we're gonna to do that right now. Now that the band is taking a break and we'll actually be able to thank each other. Thank God. So, um, Andy, let's start with what is this? Okay. What what did it start out as? And then uh, we'll talk about some of the changes you've made. Well, so two years ago, I went down to say beach and I actually picked up this bike off the old, off, it was, he's an older guy or whatever. I still text him with the bike, like whenever I do mob games, I send him a picture of the bike. And uh, he wasn't the original owner, his buddy was, but he was a firefighter and he got, he got like messed up in a fire. And his, uh, his they had like cuffs, like, I don't know if the cuffs, they had probably, oh. They, uh, he couldn't, he couldn't, like, do his job anymore, let alone ride a motion. So he, uh, he sold the bike to me, and then me and my dad picked it up. It was an old man bike. It was just totally stock. It had the swing arm and everything like that. I'm sorry, what kind of bike was it? It was uh, <laughs> Shadow. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> I'm kidding you, man. And then, uh, it's okay. Who the Carry on. Dang, someone's calling me. This is stupid. This is terrible. I'm sorry. Yeah, so I, uh... You're losing money there, buddy. <laughs> yeah, so I, uh... I... Yeah, it was like, had the, like the old man bags on. It was, it was all red before. And then uh, I brought it back home. And then, like, I like, took it all apart. And mom was like, what did you do? You, like, broke it. Like, it was like six minutes of motorcycle before. And then I, I called Rob, and then Rob, Rob helped me out a lot. So, Rob wait, pretty much... What year? It's a 2003. 2000, and you said 750? Yeah. Okay. And then, uh, so Rob helped me out with like literally like the whole bike. Cause I wanted to make something that's like still reliable. It's not gonna like break me like the first try. And I also wanted something that was gonna turn heads. And this is pretty good at turning heads. So okay. the front of the, the front of the bike, I yeah, got the, start. uh, it's a Sportster Springer front end. It's the four over, all chrome. Uh, and then I got a 21 inch front wheel. Uh, it's got a, I think these are, I can't remember who makes these lights, but I got them off Jeff from Perth County Moto. It's okay. got a double, double diamond headlights. My dad made this really cool aluminum headlight bracket here. Nice. And then um, my Mike and all the guys, they pitch in some money, got these bars, cut some date for my birthday. Oh, December. cool. And so my gas tank, it's a, uh, my gas tank, I got it done by a, a guy named Ron Gibbs. He's out in uh, Burlington. Mm -hmm. uh, so I could have, I spent way too much money on tank loan. I kind of regret it, but like, it does look amazing. Uh, so he, I literally like, he was really great making this black and white checkered 3D wrap around the tank. Yeah. And then all the flake that's on like her dress and on the writing and everything like that, that all the flake was blown on by hand. And then it got like 10 coats of pure coat on it. So I have them like polished up and everything real nice, but I'm going to do that. Really good. I got it. That's really nice work. Yeah. That's He's really good. Good, really good yeah. artist. That's very good. And then uh, my Coolin Reservoir is a Jack Daniels bottle. It was the first legal Jack Daniels bottle that I ever had. So I put that on my bike. <laughs> and then it's got the um, it's got the, the uh, long up sweeps on it too. That are also chrome. 
And then I got a suicide shift. So there's my shifter knob is an old cruise light beer tap that I found at a vintage store. And I, just, uh, I found a nut that fit the same type pitch, and I would just weld it on the end of the stick, and then I just made that my shifter. I'll buy your pegs. And then, uh, oh, my pegs are for, for a BMX bike. Um, I picked those up at like, for like, like 15 bucks a Canadian tire. So they're like nothing special, but like I used to ride bikes when I was younger. So I'm like, yeah, right. I'll, I'll put BMX bike, BMX bike pegs on my bike. And then um, the, hard, the hard tail was all stock. We dropped it an inch and a half in the rear. And then with the spring, we put it, uh, we put it up nine inches in the front. Okay. And then uh, from stock ride height. So yeah, I had a really good time making this bike. Really, really cool. good time. Did, did 905 Rob do the hard tail? Yes, he did. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He showed me kind of because like he's got a jig and everything, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but you did, did this one before the, the, yeah, the jig. Yeah, oh, that's, that's right? why this I was like the back prototype, back. pretty much. Yeah. If he had, if he had the uh, frame jig when I was making my bike, I would have done the round back bones in a heartbeat. Because on this one, usually he redoes the backbone because it has the square backbone. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, now he has a jig and everything, so he redoes the whole pretty much. Basically, I would say three quarters of the bike. Uh, but for this bike, this was more of a prototype design, so he kept the the backbone. Cool. Uh, yeah. And and we kind of went over the tank quickly there, uh, but just for people listening to the podcast, so the tank is a uh, a checkered flag sort of design for a base, and it has Marilyn Monroe. And is that all airbrushed? Yeah, all airbrushed. Okay. So Marilyn Monroe airbrushed. Um, on the on the top surface on the right hand side and on the left hand side it has marilyn uh i guess in her signature i'm, I'm yeah guessing, it's just a picture but, fan uh, of it. yeah so it's probably supposed to be her signature but it looks great uh real good i love the uh coca-cola bottle cap for the choke yeah flavor that that's cool yeah that's great Nothing, Nothing done, done to the motor. Uh, it's different, different jets in the, in the car, but it's yeah. like velocity stacks. All it is. I think it's got 45 jets in it. Yeah. That's it, man. Good old Honda. Pretty solid design, huh? This kind of works. You can't yeah. go wrong with yeah. King and Queen. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, I'll get mine out of here, and you can pull. Yeah, the King's Queen seat. Next. And we've got a, a disc on the front yes, and indeed. drum on the back. Yeah. Yes. yes. Stock drum right in the back. Uh, I'm just gonna pull pull it around. Sure. Or you could, yeah. hey, you, you could back, back, back it up. Back it up. Just back it right and up. You're the guy it. with the cool helmet. Okay. Me? Oh. Now when I see you guys, I always see that helmet when you guys go by. Yeah. And I think, <laughs> the German okay, cap. Who is that? Now I know. Right? The suicide cap. And now everything makes sense, right? So, yeah. Okay. So what what is this? So this is my 2002 Yamaha V Star 650 Custom. Mm -hmm. Um. I mean, I bought it still uh, probably when I buy this, maybe a year and a half ago, I bought this bike. It was my mm -hmm. first uh, personally owned bike. The bike I learned on was my mom's and I realized, because after coming here and meeting Mike at Freedom Machine, I realized right. I just had to get something uh, that I could really put my hands on and and kind of mess up a little bit. So, so anyways, um, at the front. so at the front, I mean, this is all, you know, not too much done. I just have um, extending the forks here. I have some eight inch slugs. So that's just oh, inserts. So okay. basically- um, And they're at the top yes. of the fork. So you oh, pop okay. off the little cap on the yep. top of the forks and uh, on the top of the tube. And then you slide the tube down and that uh, threads into the, the existing tube. That is cool. And it, it basically fills that void. It extends yeah. it. Um, yeah. And you can adjust them however you want. But I, I have mine maxed out because long front ends are dope. Well, and it makes total sense the way it's put together here. You've yes. got a triple tree holding the original form. Some would say it's still sketchy, but... <laughs> now, it looks pretty solid to me. Yeah, I mean, yeah. To, I get any kind of movement in that joint it would take a lot of stress on that front end. You'd have to. Yeah, well, for a long time, I, uh, so when I first did this for a long time, I forgot to actually put the rubber seal in. Okay. So I just twisted it on, and for probably about maybe over a year, I was riding with forks, 
uh, fork fluid okay. just leaking all over me. I would ride, and God forbid I was wearing anything, you know, other than a black shirt. I'd have dots yeah. all over me. It was it was pretty bad. But then, now, is this raked at all? So, no, this is actually stock rake. I, I do get that a really? lot, but no, this is stock. It, uh, yeah, it's funny the way it works out, huh? It really yeah. is out there. It, well, when uh, you extend the front end, it, it really kind of wakes up the front of this bike a bit. It's not so... Yeah. Yeah, people, I always get that a lot. Did you extend the front end? And I always say, no, I didn't even touch it. I just extended wow, the front end. I, I love that. That is so cool. Yeah, I uh, I like it a lot. I want to extend the front end more, but the problem is just the um, the overall size of the stem. Mm -hmm. uh, if I was going to get anything longer, like 10-inch slugs, it'd be past the triple tree, and that's right. just terrible to and ride And then it gets so, sketchy, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I couldn't even. These there's no way I could trees, do that. Are these factory? Yes, everything, the whole front end is factory. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So um, I really just cleaned it all up. The the whole f rim is factory. I just got you know some fresh meat for it. The tires I like Would like a nice it? solid tire. I think it's a Shinko on the front. They look like Shinko. Um, yeah. I believe. I believe it's a Shinko. Yes, that's what I, yes, it is. It yeah, is. that's what I, I like run them. on the sporty. They're like good the tires. Walls. Yeah, I like. Them. Um, you know, I got no problems with it. I like the size of them. I like a good meaty tire because I take this thing absolutely everywhere. Right. So Andy's uh, Andy's tractor around the front kind of scares me a little bit, especially how fast he takes corners. <laughs> um, yeah, no, it's the, uh, uh, it's all stock, man. Tool bag on the front. So the funny thing about this tool bag, I was gonna get one originally because they're just super handy. Yeah. And um, and I was picking up some parts, so. When I was originally building this bike, because I bought it, rode it for a year, kind of customized it, just some cosmetics, but not anything too crazy. And then uh, in the winter was really, uh, you know, my time. I took this thing apart all the way down to the motor. I only, I didn't really know how to do anything. So I bought a climber manual and, uh, and whatever I had trouble with, I just looked at the climber book and I had this thing all the way down to the bare frame. I pulled the motor and everything, but um, yeah, so. Anyways, when I was getting parts for uh, for the bike, the guy had a bunch of um, of Harley stuff. He was like, "I'm getting rid of all my Harley stuff." He was a metric guy, and uh, and this was in there. He just gave me a bunch of stuff for free, turn signals and all that, and I got this sick, sick and the bag headlight, for free. Where did that come from? So the headlight, uh, I call this my Amazon bike. All the custom parts on here are from Amazon. <laughs> And if and if they're not from Amazon, it's because someone had an accident and gave it to me for free. Okay. So, uh, so yeah, the headlight is from Amazon. Um, the bag kind of blocks it, but I custom made um, the uh, uh, the bracket here, the mount for the headlight. Yeah. It's out of so it's a ten mil wrench. I bent oh. kind of into like a half okay. part, and then the other supporting side of that mount for the headlight is the. Um, the uh, mono shock wrench that comes with these uh, with these bikes in the kit. Okay. Just chopped that in half and welded that on because I nice. felt like it would fit nicely. And honestly, it it's solid. The light would break before the 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 bracket, so it's Very it's solid. Good. And that just bolts right onto the triple tree. And that's a small light. Um. Yeah. Yeah. I, I like the smaller lights. Yeah. Uh, you could go a lot smaller you know you see, you see the guys with the little pan lights right yeah right. um but no i like it it's i just you can swap the bulbs it's super easy it was uh, a little on cheaper side cool tell me what the chain is about where oh so these chains um purpose wise it's for uh when you turn it's basically a, uh, a steering stopper, stopper. Um, but on this bike it's purely you know um uh what's cosmetic. Really a cosmetic it's purely cosmetic it doesn't really do anything i just like the way they look because it's kind of yeah. ratty and i like i like the style those little aesthetic pieces nice. on there engines stock no changes so there. um it uh yeah it's just a stock 650 cc uh the really the only thing i did was i i, I put the jets in it because i completely took out the battery box my vision with this bike was anything plastic that doesn't need to be there i'm getting rid of so okay. all the plastics other than um obviously other than the battery box cover and the compartment cover over there uh i left on there i switched those up for chrome ones but uh, yeah i took off all the plastics and uh, that included the battery box. So I, I run no filter, no nothing, and it runs like a dream. Nice. So I just rejetted the carb. That's pretty much all I've done. Nice. Yeah. 
And the gas tank, original? So, so the gas tank, I bought it with this paint. It is original, um, but, sorry, the tank is original, but the, uh, the paint was aftermarket. So this is an automotive teal or turquoise. People can argue with me about it all day. Um, but yeah, I, I bought the bike with that kind of like 50s uh, styling with the classic um, turquoise with the two-tone and then the silver pinstriping. I think it reminds right. me of like an old Bel Air. Yeah, it is. And I, cool. I really fell in love with that paint when I, uh, when I bought the bike because I saw uh, Freedom Machine when I was here two years ago. I saw a Harley Sportster with that exact color combo and I loved right. it. It was my favorite bike here. Nice. So, uh, and then of course the Mexican yeah. blanket deal on the seat. Yeah, yeah, the matching. So yeah. I did that myself because um, when I was customizing this bike and I wanted to switch up the seat, I wanted something, you know, kind of cool because uh, before it just had like a regular brown leather one seat, um, one yeah. person seat on here and oh, that's kind okay. of, basic i want to switch it up so to kind of stick with the whole chopper theme uh mike for 30 bucks sold me his old this was on his old bike and when he first bought it this sold a uh, short kind of um low cut kings and queens yeah and i bought this uh he, well he already re-wrapped it because it was beat the shit that seat covered in duct tape he already wrapped it um so i basically just got a matching mexican blank off amazon and i just re-wrapped it myself um, you know, and I had a lot of fun doing it and I, I could do a better job, but it was kind of just a quick and easy, I've never done it before. You know what? And, it looks great. It um, matches the tank. Yeah. It's, uh, it's yeah. kind of cool. I really yeah. like it. I think it matches this the overall aesthetics of the bike. It is a horrendous seat to sit on. It is terrible. <laughs> um, I would totally switch it out, except I love the seat too much, yeah. the way it looks. So, uh, I haven't switched it out yet. I think I'll just, um, I'll just, you know, put up tough with it. Out. Yeah, tough it out. Tough it out. There you um, go. I got a belt on here because that's what's holding it on. Um, not much more I can say about that. And we're still running the drive shaft and. Yep. And, yep. Um, I can't. The dog boat. Well, you can't. Uh, you can't convert these things. So it's drive shafts. You know, I prefer chain, but you know, you don't get everything you want. Um, it is. Uh, it's pretty low. Uh, I took out the mono shock. And um, I, I didn't, I went with a dog bone, which is basically you, you make um, a filler for the mono shock. Right. So it's just a steel right. piece in there that replaces it. And I just measured it to about two inches shorter. So I, I lowered, basically I extended the front end eight inches and I lowered the rear by, uh, by two. Right. So it, it, again, that's why it looks way more pronounced in the front, I think, is because I gave it that super yeah. weak look, low in the back, tall in the front. Um, and uh also i was gonna say yeah it's just cool super what ratty else got, what else have we got on the other side so mess around bike exhaust like, well you got oh the, yeah the I, I i have my little uh my little uh, aesthetic bits i've probably made a million well i've gone through uh probably four that's my fourth sissy bar now um because i i get bored and um i get bored and this is kind of just something i do all the time i just remake stuff and are those your turn signals down there? Nope. Those, those, those are my brake lights. Brake lights. Yeah. I I don't have I don't have a turn signal. I don't have a horn. <laughs> it's just chopper, cool. chopper stuff, man. And what else? Exhaust. So the exhaust, I do switch up the exhaust quite often as well. Um, I've had a lot of variations, and now I just kind of start messing around with making my own. So. Uh, this is just the Canadian Tire Special. Um, yeah. <laughs> I have uh, just some kind of like a shore angle cut up sweeps. Nothing crazy, but it's simple. Right. looks good and it sounds awesome. I think. Yeah. So I like it. Uh, oh, we got the cool chain for the brake. Yeah. Yeah. So funny enough, I, I see that all the time and I really like it. It's like yeah. a cool uh, little aesthetic piece. Adds the ridiness of the bike. And it, it you know, to the average person, it seems kind of right. scary. Um and you still run hand crush foot shift <laughs> yes so it's right. all it's all normal i did actually i don't know if you noticed i did weld on a heel toe shifter there yeah um because learning on a bigger cruiser bike a 1300 cc honda uh i did fall in love with the heel toe shifter because it just made everything a lot smoother i wasn't i didn't find i was jumping into neutral a lot okay um and i just i like the motion of it and for the fast shifting it was great plus also uh, when i first started riding this bike 
um, it just seemed to have a really long throw whenever I would lift my foot to shift up. So uh, I kept hitting in the neutral. It was pissing me off quite a bit. So I had, I felt like the heel toe was a must. Okay. That was probably the first thing I did actually. Cool. Was the heel toe shifter. Nice. Yeah. Um, Very good. <laughs> yeah, it's not much. It's my, uh, is definitely my shit bike, I call it. All my mistakes and, you know, but I just, if whenever I feel like being lazy, I kind of You're just, learning and having fun and, yeah. and you use it. That's what I love about it. It, it gets you. Yeah. So, oh, I ride, I ride the absolute piss out of this thing. I don't, I drop it for fun. So, <laughs> nice. it, uh, it definitely, it, it definitely takes quite the beating and, uh, and I, I, I love it. Yeah, it's, it's a great bike. Fantastic bike. Great. So, well, why don't we roll it out? And Mike will back yours in here. Alrighty. Sweet. You're good. Right, okay, Mike. Um, what is this? Uh, okay, so this is my uh, 2004 VLX 600 Honda Shadow. Um, if you ever watch like Lane Slip Boulevard on YouTube or like unaffiliated, yeah. like this is like I was watching those videos in like 2018. Like holy crap, I need a. Honda Shadow 600, man. And yeah, I got it. I got it in Quebec. Uh, me and my dad went uh, two nights. I slept in the back of like a little car trailer. He slept in the car because he snored like crazy. Right. And uh, we picked this bike up. I only bought it because it was a 600 and it worked had, not this tank, but a different uh, peanut tank on it. It had a Harley one on it. And I was like, okay, I'm, I'm coming to get it right now. And it's pretty cheap too. It was like, yeah. Oh, All right, really so fun. the tank. Yeah, so this. So yeah, this is just a TJ Brutal custom. Okay. Tank. But I'll, I guess I'll start from the front just to. Sure. You know, so I don't yeah, let's myself. do that. Uh, so front wheel is a 19 inch just stock uh, Honda Shadow. Yeah, Honda Shadow wheel. And then I got Pirelli roots uh, for the wheel. I got I, I went to the dealership and I was like, man, I need the biggest tires that I can fit on these bikes. Like, give me some meaty, like fat, meaty one tire, big walls. And the guy gave me these, so I was, I was pretty, pretty happy. Cool. Uh, I got. Six over forks done by forks by Frank, and then I got what Jeff has the six inch extension. Oh, in really? There as well, that's all inside this sleeve. Because okay. I got so this this bike uh, last year looked like a lot different. It was black, and you know, I got in an accident, and the first thing that broke was my whole front end because I had what he has, and that gave like I crashed, I got in a crash, and I that gave so I was like, I need some sleeve. Like, if I'm doing it again, I need some sleeve there just to keep it together, right? Um, so this is a total 12 over total 12 yeah. over wow i had to get this so this part right here the plant that's actually a bottom oh, bottom fork yeah the fork brace yeah, yeah. The fork brace that's actually a bottom triple tree that i just cut out and then slid it down there just to make it you know when I, before i had it i would turn like the wheel and the handlebar <laughs> going two different ways so i was like i need something more stable there's a lot of things that can move up there, yeah. right? And oh, everything, yeah. yeah. Especially with the length, too. Like I had six six overs before my accident, like just six over stock, and uh, yeah, it was like, see, like you didn't feel that at all. But once I added that extra six inches, yeah. it was like a whole different level of torque. So. And I got four inch TJ Brutal custom risers, and then I got 14 inch. I think my girlfriend bought me these for Christmas, but I think 14 inch uh, ape hangers. These, I won actually at the last Freedom Machine. I put my ticket into uh, the Perth County Moto booth, right? And uh, I, I completely forgot about it. I went out to take a piss. This is after I met these guys. I went out to take a piss. And I keep hearing, Michael, Michael, come to the front. Come to the Perth County uh, booth. And I was like, there has to be a hundred other Michaels here. Uh, and then I think he kept going. They are like, last call, you got two minutes to get here. And I was like, yeah, I'm just going to go and see if it's me. And it was me and I won. This is like a thousand bucks. Like, you know, right. Well, I, I actually have yeah, the other you have one. The old one cause my Cause his accident messed it up. And of course I got the handy down bike. There you go. So I got it for free. I was loving it. And his stock rake is just extended uh, 12 inches. Um, I got extend. I'm a pretty tall guy, like not overly tall, but I'm pretty tall for this bike. So I just kind of made it longer for myself. So I got the extended uh, 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 foot controls. And then I got uh, these uh, BMX style kind of shifters. Yeah. Just to have it look pretty badass. My horn, I just got like a little bicycle horn that like you squeeze the end of it. Right? Yeah. So that, yeah, that's uh, that's my horn. The cops love that one. <laughs> and then, there are things we do just so we can say it's there and it's functional, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, the tank is a TJ Brutal custom 
Yeah, you know, like, it's, it's like, like they make Harley style pants for yeah. bikes. So me and Andy got them. Rob, 905 Rob got them too. Yeah. Uh, the seat, uh, as the drag specialty seat, yeah. I think it's, it is. And, uh, and then the passenger seat is just like one that kind of matches up to it. So yeah, it looks yeah. great. It works out really well. The pipes, I got, uh, yeah, I got, yeah, okay, I'll start with the, with the pipes. Uh, I got the pipes, uh, I made those out of just like uh, leftover uh, exhaust parts. And I did a two into one with like the, like the little expansion chamber and then the fishtail. Yeah. So it sounds pretty mean. That's cool. It kind of sounds, yeah, we, we kind of laugh at how our bikes sound, but that's <laughs> yeah, fun. And then the sissy bar is just a TC bro sissy bar, uh, the long one. And then the rear fender is, from an old, uh, I think it's from an old soft tail or something. Yeah. But I just got that at Swap Me for like 10 bucks. Uh, my electrical tank, a lot of people buy like the full metal TJ Brewer custom ones, but I just took some PGC pipe and some caps and bolted it on there. It's like, nice. you know, it still works. Yeah. Uh, my coolant overflow is just like another TJ Brutal custom. I was oh, working that's at- that's right. Was, you guys have to worry about coolant, yeah. don't you? Yeah, you do. I'm air cool. Yeah, you're air cool. I like that. Cool. I was working at Toyota, uh, like factory at the time when I was building this. Like the first, like the first time I was building this. So I just like splurged on like TJ Brutal Customs. Every time I got a paycheck, I was like, okay, I get, get one thing from there. But uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty fun. Like it's not, it's not as fast as I'd like it to be, but that's why I got the 750 Ace coming. Yep. That one is like, you know, well, at least keep up with Andy, because he can just pin it. <laughs> yeah. But you know, these, these bikes, this style of bike, and we've talked about this a lot, it's really not about going super fast. Yeah. It, it's not the sport bike thing. It's yeah. more about, you know, it, it's more about you in the bike, you know, your ideas, your thoughts. It's more about carving and cruising and, and just yeah, yeah, sort yeah. of a, a comfort and a, and a real personal yeah, yeah. connection with the bike. Oh yeah, Absolutely. This, this bike is like my like, I don't know, I love it. It's, it's our pride and joy. I love bikes. It. Well, and I personally feel these are probably the safest bikes on the road because the guy who's riding it is not trying to set land speed records or impress anybody. And once you put this much time into something, the last thing you want to do is so drop it. Yeah, you don't yeah. want to ruin it. Oh, when I crashed this bike two years ago, uh, I didn't even care that my leg was broken, that I was covered in road rash. I was like so distraught that I thought my, because the, the, the front end was like, the, like the ports were twisted and I was like convinced that my neck was bent too. And I was like, put all this time in this bike. And I get it out. And, and I tell you, my fault that I got an accident, so I'm done. But then I, and you, know, you healed up okay? Oh yeah, I'm fine. My legs are okay. That was like, that was last summer, right? Yeah. Yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah you and Andy both had your yeah. accidents oh, last yeah. summer. I broke my leg, and then two weeks later, you fell I think off. that was in June, wasn't it? Yeah. June was a June terrible first, month. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, better, yes. better June this year. Yeah. Right? Like, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, nothing, nothing yet this year. Cross our fingers, yeah. you know. And yeah. we're going. Things are going well so far. Yeah. So. But I got a. Uh, when I crashed my bike, I got a week, I got a month and a half off of work, and every day I was just like working on this thing, trying to, you know, it's it's a little ratty again, but when I finished it, it's like it was like really nice and clean. I was like, yeah, I'm proud, I'm proud of this bike now, because I had this old black ratty Mad Max looking thing, and then these guys started showing up. Jeff's bike was like super pretty and chrome, and then Andy built his bike all pretty and chrome. I was like, I can't. No, I started. I started. I started this thing, and I can't have the, the, the ugliest bike. So, no. it's all about personality. Yeah. Man. No. Yeah. This. That's what this entire thing is. Yeah. Anything else? Um, I did the hardtail. It's it's uh it's kind of like a half hardtail where I keep the bottom part of the swing arm. And okay. I the, and then I just rejoined the top, so it's dropped right. down like two or three inches in the back, and then raised up twelve in the front. And it's just like really stretched out while you ride. Yeah. No, it looks great. Good job, Thank you guys. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much for having us on. Hey, no worries. Yeah, this is awesome, man. Thanks for yeah. being here. I mean, just sit around talking about bikes all day. Yeah. It's good fucking good weekend. It, it, good weekend, man. <laughs> Not a bad day at all. Yeah. Oh, it's vacation. Very good, you guys. Okay, I'm gonna get some shots before I leave. Just you know, of certain items yeah. and uh, some B-roll stuff. 
Speed and Color podcast, TubeCast. We are on all the podcast platforms. We're on Instagram and we are on YouTube. And uh, we appreciate you. I would appreciate it if you would subscribe, follow, like, comment. Hey, if you got questions for these guys, put them in the comments section. I'll uh, I'll correspond with these guys. We'll get you some answers. That's it from the Bad Living Road Show. Thank you for being here. We will see you soon. Woo. Thank you. Awesome, man. Man, that was awesome. Oh, yeah.